The U.S. and Israel have agreed to a military aid package worth $38 billion over the next 10 years, $3.8 billion a year. Not quite as much as Netanyahu wanted. Um, they currently get on average $3.1 billion a year. And they, I think he wanted more like 4.5 a year. Um, and they moved it up to 3.8. That's a lot of damn money. And there, there is no, there are no caveats. There's nothing in there about, you know, the settlements. Um, just the money, just have it. And but people go ballistic when someone sees someone buying a sneakers bar with a snap. I agree. Of course, you know, APAC is very excited about the increase. Um, but uh, Palestinian rights groups and, and others have spoken out about the increase in money. So this would be from the, the current agreement ex expires in 2018. Um, that's the 3.1 billion we give Israel a year. Uh, this will go from 2019 to 2028. And this is the largest single pledged amount of bilateral military assistance in U.S. history. Um, you know, Israeli officials say this will send a signal to, to that, that, that the, you know, the U.S., the relationship is strong. But however, there are complaints, of course, because you continue to have ongoing issues in that region and Israel continues to just like, you know, bump it. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. We can't nobody say nothing to me. And we're giving you more money. Like if you have a child that's being disrespectful or not following the rules, you do not reward them by increasing their allowance. You know, you, 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 you cut some stuff back. True. Like the state is like Israelis have universal health care. Israelis have a lot of stuff that we don't have. And yet we can find money to help fund them militarily when they don't necessarily need our money. I mean, their economy is in a better shape than ours is in. I mean, there's there's so I mean, many issues on so many levels, but but the human rights aspect. I mean, when we look around and we wonder why we see the rise of extremist groups, it's like after a while they get tired of seeing the made in USA weapons in their backyard after we've blown their uh, country the bit. So yeah, that tends to generate a little bit of resentment, but you know, um, in order for the, um, the war machine, you know, the industrial complex to exist, somebody got to be fighting somewhere. You know, a bit of this is, you know, uh, job security. You know, yeah, and I mean, so and so one of the issues is that uh, allegedly, like uh, Israel will only eventually be able to use the money to buy products from the U.S. defense industry right. rather than its own, right. um, and they're not going to be allowed to use the money to buy fuel for. Um, so I'm like, so what? <laughs> if Obama becomes some type of defense contractor lobbyist, I'm calling flag on the play. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, you, Israel has um, agreed not to lobby the U.S. Congress for additional funds unless a war breaks out. Um, so, so there are a lot of. I mean, wait, 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 there are wait, a lot. Wait, of, I'm not going to ask you for no more money. Unless you know, this is it. I'm, not, I'm just not going to ask for no more money unless a war breaks out. Then I'm going to have to need to come. You mm -hmm. know what? You know, Secretary Clinton has said that. Uh, she applauded the deal saying help solidify and, and chart a course for the U.S.-Israeli defense relationship into the 21st century. You, um, you guys may recall her speech for APAC. She's very a very strong ally of, of APAC and Netanyahu. Um, she is supported heavily by um, Mr. Power Rangers, whose only issue is Israel. I mean, she actually, she wrote a letter um, Hank Saban. <laughs> she wrote a. <laughs> I said, Miss, he's the creator of Power Rangers, as got pointed out to me. I never made that connection, but until recently, um, he's also Mister. I'm gonna double down and spend all this money to crush Donna Edwards because she's a little too easy on the Israeli situation. Um, but no, she wrote a she wrote a letter at the start of the election cycle um, last. I want to say like last April, last May, maybe July, um, 2015. Uh, just just basically blasting the BDS movement and, and, and affirming her commitment. And then we saw that same language and heightened rhetoric um, and a real lack of understanding, empathy even for the Palestinian people um, during her APAC speech. And we've, we've seen that all along throughout the DNC. Um, even, you know, the infamous showdown on Twitter between Bakari and Rhonda Kalik that 
was the debate that never happened because Bakari is a punk. Did I even oh. say that? <laughs> um, Wait a minute. I who got say- scared and never debated. Oh, you don't know about that. So she said it. She said it. But you yeah, know. I did. And he's on the who's who list to be the possible watch list for the next Democratic, you know, governor of South Carolina. Anyway, um, I did not say that. But 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 what's really interesting though about this conversation about increased military aid. And everyone's really is supportive and cheering this 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 decision. You have uh, you know, Governor Cuomo, little baby Cuomo up in New York, who is, you know, also very pro-Israel and has basically determined that it is illegal for companies to support um divestment. However, um the intercept and Greenwald actually did a piece yesterday in the, for the intercept about how it's fascinating that. While, you know, key officials, notably Hillary Clinton and, and Baby Cuomo, and yes, I call him Baby Cuomo because his daddy was was big Papa Cuomo. Papa Cuomo, yeah. His daddy was Papa Cuomo. Um, really, it's because I can never remember his first name. I get him confused with his brother all the time. Daddy Mario, who was my governor when I was a kid. <laughs> but um, anyway, but, but what's really interesting in this piece, uh, you know, real short to the point, is the fact that here we have North Carolina, right, with HB2, which has discriminatory and human rights, you know, what, what, what is arguably a human rights violation, human rights discrimination and other issues in terms of the bathroom law provisions involving transgender um, Americans and individuals in general, right? And, and everyone has applauded the boycott um, of North Carolina on those grounds, you know, the NCAA has pulled, uh, I think it's seven championship games for this next, Mm -hmm. um, season, you know, from the state of North Carolina because of it, um, several companies have decided they're not going to do business there. Uh, other states, including New York have decided that they're going to forbid state employees from traveling to North Carolina on official business. I mean, this is, but we have the situation that we do in, in Israel with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And it's like this notion of understanding and empathy for human rights goes completely out the door. And it's absolutely okay. And let's throw even more money at the situation. So the juxtaposition of those two issues um, in this piece by Glenn was, was, was really actually interesting to me. And maybe someday I'll be important enough and he'll follow me back on Twitter and come on the way and we can chat about it all. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 but. Yeah, maybe so. But 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 what do you think about that? Like, I really feel like the selective morality of of contemporary Democratic leaders, in particular, is is fascinating to me. Um, it, we, well, you know, it's, the, it's fascinating, but it's not surprising because once again, we're right. talking to a common thing. Follow the money. You know, your empathy. The empathy mm-hmm. is only as good as the the paper trail. And when I talk about paper trail, I talk about the money trail. You know, how much uh, their empathy or caring uh, seems to go uh, according to their pocket or what, uh, you know, whether it is to their political advantage to do so. And so this is where the hypocritical tag comes in for the Democrats and frankly to both major parties because in all fairness, they all do it. Right. Uh, of what's going on in Israel, there is no way that you can stand by and say uh, that what is going on in Palestine uh, does not demand attention. Does you know? There's there's this kind of mindset that there's a particular weird pecking order, like your struggle is worse than mine, and you know, well, well, what about the you know the Holocaust? Well, what about the, mm-hmm. there's no fucking pecking order to injustices. Wrong is wrong, you know, and what's going on in Palestine, it's wrong. Period. It is. It does not have to be a complicated policy piece. And there are certain things that Israelis being asked to do, which is really not that difficult. We keep enabling them to continue the oppression with the funding that we send to them, yep. with the military supplies that we send. This is not a very complicated, complex uh, uh, issue to solve. And if we really wanted peace, peace could be gotten. It's There's no money in it. No, I agree. I absolutely agree.